yesterday to today. God, on this morning, we lift up holy hands. We lift up the We lift up clean hands to a good father that sees us just the way we are. Oh God, we thank you that you care so much for us, that you woke us up. You did it again. You touch us this morning with the finger of love. You are the overseer of our lives. You are the bishop of our souls. And for that reason, we give you continuous praise. <laughs> yes, we do, God. We give you continuous his honor oh god not concerning our circumstance not because we're going through trials and tribulation but god we give you an automatic praise oh god we thank you on this third sunday morning for gathering a few of your handmade special service together them that are here and them that may be watching god we thank you god for this is the day that you have made we will rejoice and be glad in it father you said in the old testament scripture this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and delivered him from all of his trouble God we thank you God that you are hearing our cry oh God them that are praying God through their circumstance through their hardship through their loneliness God through even their pain God father we're still giving you continuous praise we shall let nothing separate us from the love of Jesus Christ oh God whether whether there be principality, whether there be wickedness, God, whether there be diversion, God, oh God, whether there be hypocrisy, God, we shall let nothing or no one separate us from the love of God. Even in our private time, when nobody else is around, we'll still cry holy. We'll still live holy. Hey God, our thoughts will magnify you. My ways will magnify you. My thoughts will magnify you. My ways will glorify you. Oh God, on this morning, Morning, God we love you because you first love us we care because you first cared for us oh God we give to you because you gave to us first and God will never forget what you've done for us God you've done so much for us God just that just the grave God just got got the heal God that was enough God to bring me in to bring us in to be called sons and daughters of the grace oh God and we will whoa we will walk in boldness we will tell a dying world everybody under the sound of my voice oh God we are in debt to you God we'll let a dying world know starting in my home we'll let them know that Jesus is real that Jesus died for your sins and you got to get your house in order because Jesus is soon to return oh God help us God to cry loud and to spare not God continue to give these your people the members and friends of Mount Pisgah give us holy boldness help us God to cry on the housetop help us to go in the valley and to let them know that Jesus is real that Jesus is Lord oh God help us God not to be ashamed of what you've done for us and what you're getting ready to do in our lives father continue to bless these your children oh God the sheep of your pasture oh God the little ones God elementary middle school high school college father look on them God help them God to keep themselves help them to keep their minds stayed on you God give them to know God that you're looking for them to live holy that you're expecting them God to obey them that have the rule over them oh god we cover them now oh god under the blood god because we have faith to believe that the blood still covers cover our youth cover our children even the babies god oh god keep them safe from harm's danger is our prayer father continue to bless marriages god i know god the enemy god he has a target on marriages holy christian unions but god we rebuke the devourer that come to separate couples to becoming one father knit their hearts together even in love the more give them God to agree to disagree in the name of Jesus father always look on our singles God continue to hold them in the hollow of, of your hands give them the faith and the patience of Job to wait till the change come oh God give them to know God that you haven't abandoned them you haven't forgotten about them but God you are the God that will meet every need in their life oh God give Give us, oh God, to continue to cry to you 
even when tears don't come down. Give us to continue to give to you, God, even when we only have a morsel. Oh, God, we just want to be found worthy. We want to hear you say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter ye the joy of the Lord. Father, help us, God, to know, God, that success is the children's bread. Help us to know everyone under the sound of my voice that, God, we are in the winning circle. But because you live within, because Jesus Christ abides on the inside, every circumstance that's coming, every circumstance that you're in, every circumstance you're coming out of, God say, if I be for you, I'm more than the world against you. Oh, God, help us to lift up holy hands in every situation, God, and glorify your name. Father, we love you, and we give your name all the glory and praise. And it's in Jesus' matchless name we pray. Oh, now, only you that agree with that prayer, clap your hands together. Give God praise. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Come on, give, make the devil mad. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise. Did you know that praise and worship is work? <laughs> Some of y'all go to work, hard hats, vests, and all kind of stuff. You got to work. Worship and praise is work. It's not easy. And sometimes it's work. <laughs> we don't mind working. Hey, we don't mind sweating. We don't mind getting out of the comfort zone just to praise and magnify the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, we are overcomers. Can you look at someone across the room or by you say, you are a overcomer? Come on, they need to hear that. Say, you are a overcomer. Oh, yes. We want to let you know, amen, we're coming down to the end of a year, but it ain't about 2024. Look at somebody say, it's about right now. It's about now. The Bible said, Hebrews 11 and 1, now faith is a substance of thing hope for the evidence of things not seen. Amen. We thank for everyone for coming out. Amen. We thank you for, amen, just coming out, wanting to be a part of this prayer. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. I want everyone to lift up holy hands. Amen. I want to invoke the blessings and the praises of God. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. I may have the mic, but you got the experience. Come on. I got the mic, but you got the relationship. Amen. Praise and worship is never predicated on the person with the mic. Oh, come on. Let them hear it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, you might not be in consistent pain or consistent trouble now, but praise him that you're not. Come on, praise and worship take work. Come on, it takes sacrifice. That's what worship means, Renee. Sacrifice. Oh, God, I don't feel like in my like, things are going on in my life, God. I just want to sit down and be metal. No, God say, I need to hear your cry. Whoosh, God say, amplify your voice in the earth. Mm, God say, your voice is warfare. God said the clapping of your hands is warfare. Like God said the stomping of your feet is yelling you. Who shut up? You got the victory over every territory, over every else, over every demonic force that's in your life, that's coming after your children, that's coming after your parents, that's coming after your spouse, that's coming after your loved one. God said, if you sacrifice and give me what I yada, yada, give me what I deserve. God said, give me what I gave you. Hey, Minister Corman, stand up one time, then sit down. Let me see you stand. Hey, Amen. Somebody help her. Hey, but God said, give me what I gave you. Woo, glory to God. Oh, God said, give me what I gave you. Hallelujah. 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 It's okay. I know you can't stand constantly, but if he stand one time, God said, okay, he. <laughs> glory. Hallelujah to God. God, we love you on today. Let me tell you something. We don't come for form or fashion. Amen. I love everybody in this church, but I ain't come here for none of you. You come, it got to be like that. Amen. Sister Edith, we're not supposed to put man and woman above God. I'm here, but we are here because we're called. We're here because we have an assignment, Sister Riley. Amen. And it's not just to have good church, but it's to learn. It's to be instructed what my assignment is. Amen. So that when we leave these four walls, we will be, amen, we will be obedient to the Spirit of God. What makes us obedient to the Spirit of God? You wanting to be a son and a daughter. If you desire to be a son and a daughter, the Bible says, they that obey my word, obey my spirit, I contribute them as a son and a daughter. Ah, Minister Herbert, that's why we can say, Abba, Father. Hey, come on. Can we say the Our Father prayer together? I meant to do that earlier. We're going to do it now. Come on. Our Father.
which I'll in Hollywood be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Yes, God. Devil don't like this. We don't want to call. <laughs> Our daily bread. And forgive us. Yes, God. Who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Us. All evil. The kingdom. Power. Put a praise on it right there. Hey! Put a praise on it right there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, I just heard it. Our God is an awesome. You remember that? I just heard that. Is an awesome God. He reigns on heaven above with. Come on, y'all can help me. Dumb power and love, our God is an awesome God. Come on, let's brag on our God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom. Some power and love, our God is an awesome God. Come on and say, Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with. He has all the wisdom in the world. <laughs> Love our God is an awesome. Come on, let's say it one more time. Say our. Ooh, I'll share him with you. <laughs> but the real, you can have some of my God. <laughs> but he's my God, Takesha. It's a personal, intimate relationship that we got to have with him. Our God is an awesome. One more time, say it real good. Yes, he is. An awesome God. God, he Come on, as you sing that song, you're telling your circumstance. Even what your family members may be going through. Doesn't matter what you're in. God is awesome. He's bringing you up. Say, our oh God, our oh God is an awesome God. Say, our oh God is an awesome God. See our God. Our God is an awesome <laughs> yes, sir. God. Come on, put your hands together. Give God praise. Hallelujah. Hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. You know why we're giving God praise? And we get to the Bible study, Sister Tamara. I know you said, Pastor, hurry up. Jesus, I'll never forget what you done. I'm messing with you. Come on. How you said. Come on, Jesus. Jesus, I'll never, never forget, forget how you brought me out. Come on, let me hear you say. Jesus, I'll never, never forget. No, never. Great God. Come on, say Jesus. Jesus, I'll never, never forget, forget what you done for me. What's his name, Riley? Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never, Jesus, I'll never no, forget no, no. how you brought me Come on, say Jesus. Jesus I'll never, never forget. forget. No, never. How can I forget? How can I forget <laughs> what you've done for me? How can I forget? How can I forget how you set me free? I don't understand how, how can I, I can forget. forget. How you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never. Jesus, I'll never forget. forget. No, never. Say never, 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 never forget. forget. I won't forget. Never, never forget. There's some things I won't say because I won't forget. Never, I ain't going to give you what you give me. Forget. There's some places I won't go because I remember. Never, oh, come on, y'all. Never forget. Ever been on your bed of affliction in the hospital? Never. Didn't he come right there? Never come on. I won't forget. Never, 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 never forget. forget. Come on, say never. Never, never oh, forget. There you go. Oh, I won't forget. I won't forget. I won't forget. I won't forget. Jesus, I won't forget. I won't forget. Never, never, never forget. I won't forget. 
forget. Even on Monday morning. I won't forget. What about Tuesday night? I won't forget. What about Wednesday hump day? I won't forget. Even on payday Thursday. I won't forget. <laughs> Even on good old Friday. I won't forget. Come on, everybody, Ooh, Saturday. I won't forget. Oh, I won't forget. I won't forget. I won't forget. Ooh, I won't forget. She's a sound never. Jesus, I'll, I'll never, never forget, forget what you done for me. Come on, say, Jesus, I'll never, Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never, Jesus, I'll never forget oh, oh, oh. how you brought me out. Come on, let's go home. Jesus, I'll, I'll never, never forget. forget. No, no. Oh, come on. Come on. You already did it. You already won. Just by your singing, just by your clapping, just by your running, stopping your finger, believing not just the song, but what the word says in the song. God, I'll never forget. Come on, as you take your seat, put your hands together one more time. One time for the Father, one time for the Son, and one time for the Holy Ghost. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. There's something about the power of your words. There's something about the power, amen, Minister Quarterman, from your own experience. And I know I didn't see any of you since last Sunday. Amen. I don't think so. Amen. So I don't know what transpired during those six days. Amen. But something happened. Amen. I look at somebody say something happened. Amen. And I got a lesson for you. It won't be long today. But I want to hear a testimony or two. Amen. Not a message. No, amen. Not amen. Just a testimony. Something that's going to encourage me. Something that's going to help Sister Tamara. Something that's going to help Tiffany. Something that when Trinity hear it, she's going to say, what? That happened to you? And you get what? Look at God. That's what testimonies are. Areas, amen, things in your life that you experienced, Sister Charlotte, and you overcame it. A testimony could also be this, something that you're in right now, and you're waiting for God's deliverance power to bring you out. And I know you're wondering, God, why I ain't got out of this yet? Why I don't have this yet? God said, continue to have the patience of Job. How many of the Job's had long, long, come on, y'all. Anybody ever read Job? Anybody know the Job had long patience. Amen. You don't have to. I don't know if you have one or, two, one or two testimonies. I felt it in the atmosphere. Amen. But if you have a testimony, you want to tell of the goodness of God for what he did, come on. Amen. Let's hear it. Tell it, sister. Say it. Come on. Oh, God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look at somebody say, do time. Do time. Do season. Amen. That's God's appointed time. You know, there's something about fire. Um, the less wood you put on it, the less the fire will be explosive and heat up the area. But the more fire, the more wood, amen, the more oak, amen. Some of y'all do the, the live, the oak on it. But the more fire you put, the more oak wood you put on the fire, the longer it lasts, the bigger it is. Prayers are like logs of fire. So, but first, you got to have a fire. Can I get a witness? And if you got the power of the Holy Ghost, look at somebody say, I got it. Sister Cynthia, if you have the power of the Holy Ghost reigning and ruling on the inside of you, don't stop putting logs on the fire. Come on. I say, don't stop putting logs on the fire. Pray in the morning. Pray in the evening. Pray when you're sick. Pray when you can't talk. Uh-huh. That young lady had a testimony up here. Yeah, you. She was in the hospital, and she said she couldn't say a word. Remember that? She said the only thing she could do is thank Jesus and just wave her hand. How many know you ain't always got to say the word, but think on the word? Uh, just think on J-E-S-U-S, and something real good is going to happen to you when you think of the goodness of the Lord. Look at somebody say, don't stop thinking of his goodness. Come on, come on, say, don't stop thinking of his goodness. 
Amen. Amen. You know what happens when we stop thinking, Sister Charlotte? We become, we start praising the devil. How do you praise the devil? Complaining. Come on, complaining. Huh? Putting a, putting a, a bad mouth on what God has already done for you. Lessening God's blessing in your life because you are allowing what you're going through to overshadow what he already done. Can I get a witness? Saints, we can't, can't let the enemy to continue to trick us. Amen. To continue to take away our joy. Because Nehemiah said the joy of the Lord will give you strength. And how many of you need strength in 2023? Oh, yeah, I know we ain't got but a couple more days, but we still need the strength of God to help us. Thank you, sister. I appreciate that. There's no place like home. Well, what the address is? 1111. Oh, great God. The boy, come back home. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. And he working. Hey, man, here, take this bill, boy. Or son, whatever you call him. I already know it. Here, take this one. Light bill, water bill, dog bill, all the bills. Hey, man, you take the dogs. Take the <laughs> Take the dogs to get washed and nails done. You're doing something up in here. I already know that's old school. Amen. Would have been another? Amen. Testify the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Oh, give it up. Oh, she want. All right. She want the light. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I. <laughs> I don't usually come out and um, give my testimonies, um, but last week, um, it's been months, um, as you guys know, that I went to go help my mom um, after her surgery. Um, so I didn't have time in. So of course, my money was looking a little short. Um, so last week at my job, um, they had called me, well, first of all, um, it was a company that adopted my kids for Christmas. Um, that was just a blessing in itself. Um, and I thought that that was the only blessing that he was giving me. So the following day, they called me in there this, um, that morning, and they called me into the office, and they gave me an envelope and said that they received another donation. It was a donation, it was a check of for $500. You know, I always worry about like, how am I gonna pay this, how am I gonna pay that? But I just trusted God, no one knew this, no one but God. That's the only one that I went to. And he blessed me beyond that I could even ever think of. So I know that I'm doing right by him. And I just thank God and give him praise. Thank you. Amen. Wonderful. To God be the glory. How much was it? Amen. Come on, y'all. Let's give, give God praise. Amen. When she said that, I didn't hear nothing. Ain't nobody say nothing. Y'all stop breathing when she said, I, said, I ain't heard nothing. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Sister Charlotte Ross. Stand up, sweetie, and shout joy to the Lord. Let me hear your joy. What's your joy sound like this morning? Come on, stand up. I know why I called you to do it. I know. Come on, say this with me. Say, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Come on, give her praise. Cynthia, go give her a hug, sweetie. Go give her a hug, Cynthia. Sister Cynthia. <laughs> yes, you. Go give her a hug for me. Amen. Give her a hug. Come on, let's give her a hand, y'all. Amen. <laughs> Cynthia said, Pastor, I'm going. <laughs> I'm sorry, listen. <laughs> hey, man, when I look at Cynthia, I don't see, I'll be looking at her like she's 35 years old. <laughs> but I got to remember, she ain't 35. <laughs> God bless you. We love you. We love you, church. Amen. We thank God for all that he's done. Amen. God is up to something. Do you hear me? God is setting you up for one of the best seasons of your life. I know it's been hard. I know it's been tough. I know for some of you it hasn't been that hard or that tough, but it's been a little challenging. But God said, I'm getting ready to open up a window from heaven. Whew, look at somebody say, don't take but one window. 
I'm speaking in your life. It don't take but one window. Amen. God said, I'm getting, because of your faithfulness, because of your loyalty to him, not to Mount Pisgah, amen, because sometimes people come here, they ain't here, they mind somewhere else, but because you're loyal to him in your home, in your praying, in your fasting, God says, I'm up to something, and I'm getting ready to open up a window for heaven. What's coming out the window? What you've been praying for. Oh, come on now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's for me, too. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Look at somebody say, I receive it. Come on. I know it's Bible study, but God want to give gifts. Come on. Come on. He want to give gifts. Woo! God want to give gifts. And your gift is predicated on how much you praise him, how much you give him glory, how much you give him honor, how much you get out of your comfort zone and give him glory and praise. How bad do you truly want it? Hallelujah! God, I thank you that I got it, but I don't have it. Oh! I thank you that I see it, but I don't see it. Can I get a witness? Do y'all feel me on that? I got it, but I ain't got it. My faith tell me, I see it, but I really don't see it yet. How many know you got to see through the eyes of faith? Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And for all of you, God said it ain't finances. Some of, you, some of you it is. Amen. Amen. But whatever it is, when God grant it to you, it's going to help you worship him more. It ain't going to drive you away from church. It ain't going to drive you away from paying all your tithes and offering and your dues. It ain't going to drive you away from your family. It's going to bring you. Somebody say close. That's what I say. Somebody say closer. Ah, oh, the blessing of the Lord, Renee. Amen. They do what? Make it what? And add. All right. All right. So be careful on what you consider as a blessing in your life. Because there's a lot of things that the devil grant you. There's a lot of things that you get because, amen, of your works. Huh? All right. Amen. But when God bless you, amen, you, nobody else's fingerprints can be on it. <laughs> nobody else's fingerprints on it but God. And I come to let you know that the fingerprint of God is on your prayers. God say, I'm coming not by your shit. The prayer. This is amen. This Bible study was a prophetic Bible study. God say, I'm coming to your rescue. I'm coming to your rescue. Stay faithful. Stay loyal. Stay committed. Because the blessings are not all financial, but some of you have been praying for some company. Some of you, yeah, by yeah. Some of you've been praying for some deliverance. Some of you've been praying for some walls to come down. Some of you have been praying that you, yeah, amen, that God strengthen your loved ones or strengthen your pastor or strengthen your neighbor. Whatever it is you've been praying, God say, I'm getting ready to do it for you. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. Trinity, put your mind on Sonia. Put both of your hands on Sonia's head. Say, in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray. Say, in the name. In the name of Jesus. Death half. Oh, situation got to change. No longer, no longer, no longer, no longer, no longer would that situation exist in the spirit of your mind. You be I yes, Be delivered now in the name of Jesus. Woo! Devil, you got to leave here. Hey, God is regulating your mind even now. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Whew, glory to God. Whew. I want to go a little higher. Wow, glory to God. Amen. I just want to feast off of him. How many of you just like being in his presence? You know, sometimes you be in prayer. I know this ain't for all y'all, but this for some of y'all. Sometimes you be in prayer and you be talking. Sometimes you need to hush and let him talk. <laughs> Amen. God can still speak to you when you ain't saying nothing. And he can speak to you as you talk. You see, there's a spirit that has been awakening on the inside of you. That's the Holy Spirit. That's the very essence of who you truly are. You're not your flesh. You're not your thoughts. Amen. You're made in the image and the likeness of Yahshua, God Almighty. So when you pray, amen, and you pray and you allow the Holy Spirit to speak through you, and that's the only time that God is growing you. That's the only time you can grow in grace as, as you draw closer to God. How do I draw closer to God through his Holy Spirit? Because God is a spirit. And how he moves is through his spirit. <laughs> can I get a witness? Huh? Amen. All right. Hallelujah to God. 
How many brought your Bibles? Come on, where my Bible thumpers? Amen. <laughs> where my Bible thumpers? Amen. I want y'all to take the same power and anointing when the devil come knock at your door now. When temptation come, amen, and your, your toes get to curling up and or that feeling coming or that addiction that some of you may have. All right. When anger come knocking, come on now. Whatever it is, you better use the same power that you feel right now and say, get thee behind me, Satan. But that are an offense, amen, to the God on the inside of me. We praise God on today, amen. I want to, amen, go back on something, amen, that God has given us. We've been preaching it all year long, even the ministers that have been preaching every message, and I strategically listen to the messages. Every message is not just the titles, but the essence. Sometimes we get, we get amen, messed up by the titles of message. Yeah, once you get a title, then I'm listening for God in the message because titles can be tricky. Amen. I know titles is something that I use. I'm going to give you one today. Amen. But titles, amen, are not, is not holistically what God is saying concerning his word. It's the contents in the word. Can I get a witness? It's the contents in the title. So, amen. We get, came up with this theme, the Holy Ghost, for this church. You will, and the win is big, you will win again. How many of you have been winning this year? Come on. How many of you have been winning? Winning just means overcoming. It just means being, yeah, being a victor of what's coming at your house, what's coming at the house of your children, of your loved ones. Why many of you have been winning, amen, the, 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 the mindset, your mindset, amen, your finances, your health. You have been a winner, amen, and because you are a winner, amen, that's why we don't lose. I say that's why we don't lose because we are winners. Hallelujah to God. I want to share a couple of scriptures with you, amen. I didn't give them to Tiffany, amen. But the first scripture is this, Amen. You see, you can't, you can't enjoy the house until the workers come down and put a foundation. Everybody in here stays in some type of structure that's called a house, whether it be a brick home, a modular home, amen, a mobile home, oh, amen, a, 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 um, a, a, a hotel home, amen. Some folks stay in hotels, but they just won't tell you. It's okay. you just in between. Amen. But before you can do anything, you must first build a foundation. And I'm going to give you these scriptures that's going to build a solid foundation to help us understand the contents of what God is saying. Philippians 4 and 13. You know it. Philippians 4 and 13. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Who can do it? <laughs> when God gave Amen, when God gave Paul to write this letter to the church of Philippi, he had specific instructions to say, I can do. What was going on in Philippi that he had to say, I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me? There was too many people relying and leaning on the church, relying and leaning on other folks. Relying and leaning on past experiences. But God wanted the church of Philippi to be established on there's some things that you're going to have to do in this season in order for you to break some cycles, to break some strongholds, to break some barriers. So the first foundation of scripture is Philippians 4 and 13. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. This is a part of the brick. This is a part of the mortar. This is a part, amen, of the foundation for the word on today. The second one is Proverbs 16 and 3. Proverbs 16 and 3. You see, we, we read the word because we need the word. Amen. Of Jeremiah, we read the word because we need the word. And every time we read a word that's given by God, amen, we ought to live it. To the best of our ability. Amen. Proverbs 16 and 3 says, commit thy works unto the Lord. And what's going to happen to your thoughts? And thy thoughts shall be established. 
The only way you can do all things through Christ that strengthen you, you got to commit your way to the Lord. Now, don't Sundays. Thank God for your Sunday service. Amen. Thank God for your Wednesday calling in the prayer line. But what about the other five days? Hallelujah. God wants us to be strategically concerned about committing our works unto the Lord. But when people come, when situations come, when, diff- when divers, the Bible says the book of James, Minister Herbert, when divers circumstances come, they come to shake your faith. They come to get you off focus, watch this, and off your alignment. Alignment. In this Christian walk, Sister Renee, you have to be aligned with what the Word of God is saying to you specifically. How many of you ever had a car that didn't have an alignment? What was it doing? Pull into the, and pull into the. That's what happens when we're not, amen, when we don't commit our ways to the Lord and we don't align ourselves to what God is saying in the scriptures. He's saying it in the scriptures, but he's actually talking to you individually. Hallelujah. He's talking to you individually. Amen. So we, God wants us to align ourselves and position ourselves to commit our works unto the Lord and your thoughts shall be established. Well, why, why did, amen, amen, the author talk about the thoughts being established? Because your mind sometimes could be the enemy's playground. Your thoughts can sometimes be wavering. That's why Paul said, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. What does transform mean? To be one way, but to transform to be another way. It just means to change. It means to growth. How many need new growth in their thoughts? Huh? You ever, you ever, been, you ever, you ever um, had some thoughts come to you? You say, God, that is not you. <laughs> But the more and more you commit your way to God, Tiffany, the more, the more you read, the more you sing your gospel songs, the more you are in the right position. How many know positioning is important? I'm talking about who you sleep with. <laughs> yeah, I said it. Amen. Who you go to shopping with. Huh? I'm talking about who you go out to eat with, who you talk to on the phone, who you DMing. Is that a word, DMing? I'm sorry, you said Tiffany, I mean. Y'all know the DM. That's, that's the little, yeah, yeah, nobody else can see. Just me and that person. We got to make sure that you commit even your DM to God. Watch your surroundings. Watch your positioning. All right? Third scripture is Psalms 37 and 4. Delight thyself also in the Lord. The only way. Brother Wesley, that you can delight yourself in God, you have to live a life of repentance. You can't be Christ-like if you don't repent on a daily basis. There's no way that you can let 24 hours go by that you don't talk to God. I might say get on your knees, but all the time you ain't got to get on your knees. You should, but you don't have to. I don't all the time. It's all about the position of your heart. I believe that every Christian, amen, every day should be repenting. He said, well, Pastor, I ain't, I ain't do nothing. Oh, you might not have done nothing, but your thoughts did. Huh? You might not have done nothing, but you, your, your actions did. Come on, y'all know what I'm saying. Amen. What, what we have to understand is that the eyes of the Lord are in every place, even in your actions. But amen. The Bible talks about, amen, sins of omission and sins of commission. There are some things that God has told you to do. You haven't done it yet. But you say, I ain't sin, but God told you to do it. Huh? And there are some sins that you have committed, that you have did the very act, but your spirit man would downplay it. Oh, she deserved it. You ain't have but $30. You needed that $15. do not do not pay all your tithes. Just do $15. Amen. They shot you a birdie. <laughs> He was mad at you. She was mad at you. Give it back to him. The Bible talks about in the Old Testament, and there's two scriptures in the New Testament, no longer do we do eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. We have to make sure we let grace and mercy be our portion. When grace and mercy is your portion, then you won't play get back. 
You know, some people play get back games, even in families, even in relationships. I, the way you made me feel, <laughs> it's, I'm coming. I'm coming back at you. I'm going to make sure how you made me feel. Forget for, forgiveness. Where's that in the Bible? <laughs> huh? Turn the other cheek. Who? No, I got to play get back. My brothers and sisters, we got to learn to delight ourselves in the Lord. I told you in order to delight yourself in the Lord, you have to live a life of repentance. You have to be able to for, for repent and then ask for forgiveness. Amen. Don't ever think that God will forgive you for anything if you don't repent first. You got, yeah, but I shit it. You got to first repent in order for him to use his, the blood that sh was shed on Calvary's cross to forgive you. There has to be a 180. There has to be a godly sorrowfulness. Amen. How many of you have ever been in a situation? Amen. You a teacher? You was a teacher. Weren't you a teacher? You still a teacher. Great God. I thought you was working at, oh, you was at the jail. That's what it was. Amen. How many of you ever been in a situation where you told a child, all right, tell you sorry? <laughs> Some of y'all parents do that. Tell you sorry. Huh? Now, that child saying they sorry because you told them to say it. Do they mean it? No. That's the same thing it is with God. You say, Lord, forgive me. You just got called. You just know it didn't feel good. Or, or somebody, amen, saw you in that circumstance that didn't glorify God. That's why the Bible talks about God judges the heart. Can I get a witness? All right, Pharaoh, you can't be there all day. All right. That scripture says in Psalms 37 and 4, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Who shall give it to you? Mm, he shall give you the desires. But first, there's an action that we must profess. Delight yourself. Live a life of repentance. Ask for forgiveness, and then that opens up God's bowels in order to give you the desires of your heart. Proverbs 3. Amen. Proverbs 3. Y'all know that one, ain't it? Mm-hmm. I knew y'all know that one. <laughs> I'm going to get on these jerseys in a little while. Yeah, don't worry. We coming. I see y'all dressed up. Proverbs 3, 1, 2, 4. Without gender, when he say my son, he's talking about mankind, okay? My son, forget not my law, but let thy heart keep my commandments. Listen to the commandments and don't forget his laws. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to who? <laughs> length of days, long life, and peace. Who wouldn't want those three? Huh? Who wouldn't want to qualify? Amen. For length of days, for long life and peace shall they add to you. Why is he adding these things to me? Because I'm making the decision to repent and live a life of forgiveness so that I can not forget his law and I can receive the Holy Spirit and I can keep his commandments. Minister Quarterman, there's no way we can keep his commandments if we don't have the indwelling of his spirit, the Holy Ghost. The Bible calls it paracleti, the one that walks on side of your spirit. And there's something about the Holy Ghost lead Lady Pharaoh. He's not rude and rude and rudely. He's a gentleman. What does that mean? He knocks. How many of y'all parents? Oh, Lord Jesus. The kids just walked in, just let's open the door. <laughs> <Great God. laughs> Renee said, um, lock the door. <laughs> I'm getting on Renee. Lock the door, and she ain't lock it. And they say, you know, Jeremiah just walk in the door. <laughs> Jeremiah said it happens. <laughs> I'm messing with y'all. Y'all know I like to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it actually happened. I was just kind of speculating. <laughs> hey, when, I, when they babies, it's okay. One, two years old, three maybe. But once they start knowing what that is and that is. <laughs> All right. But he said, behold, I come at the door and I just bust it open. Thank you. Behold, I come at the door and I. 
knock. And once you hear my voice and you recognize who it is, then you can come in. Then he'll come in. And what does the Holy Spirit do when you allow him in? He comes to be Jehovah Jireh. He comes to give you substance. He comes to give you strength. And you need strength in your weak moments. You need strength when darkness comes. You need strength when your in-laws are in, um, people that ain't in your family, but they in your family. You know, your in-laws, that's it. When they get on your nerve. And they, and they know, and they know they're wrong. You need, that's when you need the Holy Ghost. Can I get a witness? In, in any other area of your life. Amen. Come on, we get to our point. All right, last one, uh, Proverbs 3, 1, 2, 3. It says, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thy heart. That's powerful. Whew. Let not. Now, when the Bible says, I study words at time. When the Bible says, let not, anytime you see the word let, there's a contention going on. There's a choice. There's a decision, a decision that has to be made in order for whatever's coming after let to transpire. If you go outside and you see your two boys fighting, the two girls fighting or doing something, let that boy go. That means they got to make a choice. Can I get away with this? All right, it's a choice. God, I often say when I first start passing here, God give you power. Oh, I got the power to do. Power to make a choice. Hmm? And that's what makes humanity humanity. We're able, we're not robots. We have choices. What color I'm going to put on? Who I'm going to marry? What job I'm going to work? When I'm going to retire? What, where am I going this year for vacation? It's a choice. And that's the love. That's one of the attributes of the love of God. Um, um, Trinity, he gave you a choice. He gave you a choice. Amen. Let me speak for a little while. I just got some things I want to throw at you. I want to talk about the aftermath of winning. Somebody say the aftermath of winning. Give me, throw me out some things. What does aftermath mean? I know y'all don't heard that word before. What does aftermath mean? After it's over? Okay. The effects of something, boy, y'all smart. The effects of something that has already transpired. What you gonna do now? <laughs> huh? You ever, amen. You ever, the aftermath. Amen. Long time ago, I, I always think about when I was growing up. Mama Day should tell me if somebody hit you, huh? Yeah, that's in your house. Amen. I come up in Willie Farrell house. <laughs> I wish I would hit somebody back. They didn't see it the way the world see it. They didn't say, go tell somebody. Uh, I bet not come down to the school and you down there fighting. But guess what? I ain't do what Ella Farrell say. Some of y'all didn't either, what y'all parents say. You hit me, I'm striking back. Amen. Amen. So the aftermath, I want to talk about for a few while, the aftermath of winning. I ask everyone, amen. Well, we were going to ask everyone, but we didn't get the announcement out. <laughs> I think we told it afterwards. But anyway, um, to wear um, their, fam their favorite, what do you call these? Jerseys or T-shirts. It, team jersey, that's right. It could be basketball, football. It could be, it could be um, soccer. Whatever sport that you really like to wear to represent that particular team. Because usually when you wear a particular jersey, what does that say about you and that team? You like them? Okay. Do you support them? You like them? Good. You like them and support them. So when, when it... When, 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 it, when I talk about the aftermath of winning, are you still a winner when, you, when your team lost? Huh? Okay. So when your team, because see some of y'all don't have anything on. Y'all team must not be winning. Okay, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Some of y'all didn't get the announcement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because yeah, we, yeah, we, 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 yeah, some of y'all didn't get the announcement. Some of y'all forgot. Amen. So I just want to throw that out there. So the aftermath of winning says this. I wrote down some things that should happen after you win. Not in the process. Not while you're training. 
But after you went through a victory in your life, after you went through something that you conquered, that you, are, that you have been victorious in, don't lose. The first one is, somebody say hard work. What, what did our mom and dad tell us about hard work? <laughs> Amen. It'll pay off. And as soon as we heard pay off, our minds went to, thank you, De Niro. <laughs> it went to run. It went to money. But what else could that statement mean? Pays off. Uh, elevation. Growth. Reward. Benefits. Promotions. All those great attributes about hard work pays off. So all the time in our lives, we shouldn't get so excited over the money. Because, because there are some things, there are some doors that money can open. Huh? Ask Puffy Combs. Young man is going through some stuff right now. With him having a girlfriend named Cassidy and some things happen. You know, a lot of things happen. Not just with her, but some other allegations that he has. He's having to pull out a whole lot of money because of his past actions. Money can't save him. Old folks used to tell me this. Your attitude will open doors that money can. Just your attitude. And then Deacon George Stewart at Royal Church of Christ, he'll say, y'all don't heard this, your attitude controls your attitude. Just your attitude. How many know you don't learn your attitude at 30 and 40. How old little mama back there? Seven. How many know you earn it um, at five and four? Younger than that one. Your attitude is being established as a young girl, as a young boy. Okay? And how does an attitude is established as a young child? Your Come on, Rick. Say it again. Watching people. Your surroundings. Huh? Be careful, be careful what you see. Be careful, be careful what you hear. Because the very thing you see and hear, you begin to mimic it. It, it begins to form in, in, your, um, in your fabric of who you really are. It forms your characteristics, okay? That's why sometimes when you see some children acting out, they just doing it because what they saw their parents do. Or an older cousin come home and do. So when they don't get what they want, they begin to act out, I mean, or cause a scene, or have a temper tantrum. So the first one is this, the aftermath of victory is don't you get the big head. Come on, keep working, somebody say hard, amen. Some of these things you're going to say, well, pastor, these are the things you ought to have um, after, I mean, in the fight, before you get the victory. No, I'm talking about what's going to keep you being a winner. Don't lose these qualifications. The first one is hard work. The second one is believe in yourself. How many know a lot of us, I'm talking about us, we have a problem with believing in who you are. One of the reasons, Quarterman, is that we've been told who we are. And the person that has been telling us who we are, they didn't really know who they were. So you say, I only have a high school education. I only work a local job. Well, that may be the criteria of your child. But when you learn how to speak destiny, when you learn how to speak promotion, when you learn how to speak progression in the life of your children, can't you expect for them to rise above what you have met in your life? Don't all of us want our siblings, our mother, our fathers, okay, I'm sorry, our sisters, our brothers, our children, our grandchildren, our nieces and nephews, amen, to grow and to soar higher than what we are? And not just because of technology, because what we instilled in them? And it, it's up to us, amen, to give them their wings so they can fly. Amen. It's up to us to give them their wings so they can fly. Look at LeBron James. Look at how he came up. His mother wasn't highly educated, but there's something that she instilled in him as a little boy. There's a, there's a certain type of position and posture that, she, that he, she made sure he was around in order for him to set his dreams higher than his mother could ever go. And it wasn't just education for LeBron James. I believe that mama instilled God in him. I say, well, Pastor, I don't see LeBron James talking about God. You don't have to. Look at his lifestyle. 
How many of you ever seen him in a club? My, he might have went, but I ain't never seen it. How many of you ever seen something about him cheating on his wife, Savannah? I ain't never seen it. All the time, a person ain't got to yell from the, from the mountain that they're saved and they got God in their life. Our job is to look at their, look at their life. Amen. Look at their life. Hard work. Next, you need to believe in yourself. After you got the medal, you know, after the Lakers win the championship. All right, got Lakers, man. Amen, amen. Alabama definitely got something to be excited about. They beat Georgia. Hallelujah, amen. Yes, sir. Y'all hear that? All right, that's Georgia over there, y'all. All right. You might have a rumble in here. <laughs> y'all might have a, have a round two in here. Amen. I, we can stay there, but we got to go. It's a lot in that, Alabama and Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Amen. And we, and sister, you ain't got to just stand up. Just air, uh, Moon, stand up. Everybody just give her a hand, praise. Just, they finally. Oh, Lord. She don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> Yo, win it. Thank the Lord. And y'all doing good. Y'all actually could win the Super Bowl. Yeah, uh oh. You say, who got Detroit? Oh, the Chiefs. Oh, okay. I forgot you. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Well, Miracle Boy team going to be all our teams. He got his shirt on. What's on your shirt, Miracle Boy? Team Jesus. <laughs> uh, I, I, I hate to say it, and forgive me. That's a pole man t shirt. All of us got Jesus. There you go. Come on, give him a hand to y'all. There you go, brother. That's right. And I understand everybody don't watch sports. You don't have to. All right, write this the third one down. Winners are disciplined. Ooh. Winners are disciplined. Amen. You may know these signs, but it's, it makes a difference when you jot things down and you kind of go back. So hopefully you have a study time in your life and you just need to go back and read over some things and they'll help mature you. They'll help build up confidence. You know it, but there's something about, oh, I wrote this. My mama taught me that. When I couldn't spell certain words, I had to write, I don't know how many times, but it was front and back and then front and back. I had to keep writing it until I got it. Amen. Repetition. It helps your memory to be able to recall even when you're nervous. How many of you ever took a test and you're nervous? Oh, I got to do sight words. Y'all remember sight words? I had sight words coming up. Yeah, you go. <laughs> so mama, mama, mama mostly, daddy too, I guess, but mama mostly, she'll make me repetition, write them down, write them down. So when I got nervous, I still was able to write them down because I did it out of repetition. Amen. So winners are disciplined. In order for you to continue to be called a Christian, you must live a disciplined life. Give me some characteristics of being disciplined. What does discipline mean? You're what? Obedient? Oh, I like that. Being obedient? Being order? I like that. Discipline. I like that. Being focused. Huh? Organized. Wow. Self-control. Beautiful. Love that. Discipline. We all are learning how to be more disciplined. We got it. I know it. But I need to be more disciplined. Amen. So that's why the Bible says we must continue to build up on our most holy faith. How many got faith? Raise your hand. That's everybody in here. But how many can use more faith? Yes. Yes. You'll never reach the pinnacle of all of God. <laughs> God, I'm 60. I'm 59. I know you. No, you don't. You're just getting started. Amen. I could talk some more on that. But the fourth one is this. Always give more than expected. Always give more than is suspected of you. I like Shannon Sharp. I like the way he talks. I like his country. I like his dialogue. I like how he mess up some of his words. <laughs> Amen. He always talks about what, how he was raised and his grandfather and his grandmother and how they reared him. He said he wouldn't be the man that he is today if it hadn't been 
for these qualities. The first one is hard work, believing in yourself, winners are disciplined, and always give more than expected. I'll never forget, and I can, all of, I can give you all the mic, and all of you know your superstars that you like, Muhammad Ali, Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, Steph Curry. They say he'll stay in the gym until he made 100 threes in a row. You know, I'll still be there from that last year, <laughs> trying to make 100 in a row. And he said when he missed 99, he had to go back and start all over again. Oh, my goodness. I've been losing count. I'd be the 50 and say, that's 90. <laughs> I lost count. <laughs> and the coach be like, no. I say, yes. <laughs> so by him always giving more to be expected, we look at the fitness product. And we say, oh, man, he's good. LeBron James, he's good. Um, 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 James Harden and um, Kevin Durant, these guys are awesome. But look at the time they put in the gym after practice. Look at the time you put in your life serving God after Sunday. Huh? After they mistreat you. After they, yeah, bye, they scandalize your name. After you lose a loved one. After you have allowed a job that you really think you should have had slip out your grips. Or whatever it is. Look how you are still standing the test of time. Because you did the work after you won. It ain't, you don't just stop taking her, hey amen. Baby, why should take you out to eat? Roof crisp and all that. I take you all in expensive places. Great God. You don't just stop taking the, them places after you get married. I got a nine. Baby, where we going tonight? McDonald's. <laughs> and then, then it's a special night. We go to special night. After we get married, now we're going to Chili's. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm saying, it meant the same thing you did to get it, you got to do even more to keep it. You're valuable in the sight of God because he has entrusted you with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. You're already a winner because you said yes to Jesus. So now it's time for you to continue to do the work. The aftermath of a winner is even more critical than what you had to do to become a winner. I say the aftermath of being a winner is even more critical than what you had to do to become a winner. They used to tell me a long time, before I take it back, I'll add more to it. Um, uh, February 11 is a Super Bowl, okay, from February. Don't you know, I, hear, I heard some players, I, I, read, I read on it, some players, they'll take four weeks off. That's about a month, right? And they'll get right back in the gym, right back on the field, right back to strengthening, right back to eye coordination, throwing the ball. They go right back to uh, running sand hills. Anybody know what a sand hill is? Running for sand in California or wherever you're at. They go right back to training, but you just won the Super Bowl. If we want to make it back here again, take time off, enjoy your family, but get right back to work. Look at somebody say, they ain't for everybody. So I ain't going back to August. <laughs> All right, now I probably won't make it to the Super Bowl again. All right, I'm getting ready to close. The fifth one is this, winners are brave enough to fail. The aftermath of being the winner, you got to be brave enough to fail. Amen. Give me some of your favorite athletes that you know that were not always winners. Or some of you may know some of their stories. Ali Iverson. Amen. That's right. He, he, he never got a ring. Amen. Who else? Huh? Reggie Miller? <laughs> okay. <laughs> they, <laughs> they didn't complete the pinnacle, but they still are considered winners. It, they might not have reached the pinnacle of an NBA championship, but they could say, I'm an individual winner. Uh, I was on the NBA All-Star team. You can have individual accolades in your life without winning the big race. Am I right? Amen. You can have those things. So winners are brave enough to fail. You're not going to always reach your dreams or your ambitions. 
that doesn't make you not a winner. That just makes you a, a more hungry winner. I often tell the church, I mean, winners, I mean, you, you, we never lose, we always learn. You remember that? We never lose because even if I do lose, I'm learning something, and I'm going to come back better than what I was the first time. Winners are brave enough to fail. I didn't make it this time. I didn't come to church on time this time. I didn't come to communion Sunday. Uh, I didn't participate in the choir. Uh, I didn't come to revival, but I'm coming back next time better. Can I get a witness? Amen. Don't, we can't be so hard on ourselves when we, when we think we underachieve. Because as long as God do this in the morning, touch you with life, Takesha, you got a chance to do better. Amen? Amen. Number six is humility. I'd say that the first time, it says the moon said, yeah, don't get the big head. Because a lot of times when you don't won the championship, then you think you can go out there and drive drunk. You think you can go and get you a, do a line. Y'all know what a line is? Oh, why are you doing that? Oh, I won. Okay. Then you think you can go to Blue Flames, Magic City. Great God. <laughs> I, heard, I heard Shannon Shaw talk about that. That's some places in Atlanta. <laughs> Where money come down out the sky. Don't get it twisted. Just because you accomplish something great in life, you can go and act a donkey. Y'all know that. That ain't a curse word, is it? Oh, don't get okay. Don't don't get it twisted, because just as sure as you think you are it, the law will remind you you ain't. You think, oh, I'm it. Let the blue lights get behind you or come to your house, cause you hit, you push your girlfriend and you push your wife. They'll let you know you think you it, but you really ain't. All right, all right. Humility, stay humble. Amen. Second, second one is this: winners set goals. Winner set goal. Our team did not make it to the championship this year, but we're going to set a goal next year. You got to have a goal. You remember I used to say, what will a, a football team be without a goal line? What are you running to? Amen. What, who, what's the name of this thing where you take a bow and arrow? Archery? Archery. What would the use of the game, because it is a game, of archery be without a bullseye? What you playing basketball for if you ain't got a basket? <laughs> so in life, you got to have a goal, a place that you're aiming to so you can reach that success in your life. Amen? Because when you, when you shoot a basket or do a touchdown, that's success. That, uh, um, amen, you ought to um, get excited about that. All right, the last one is this. Winners visualize success. The aftermath of victory. Winners visualize success. Give me some ways that we can visualize being winners or successful. Y'all know what visualize means? You helped great time of day. You took my words. You got to first have a vision. Come on, give me some more. Got to have a plan. Yeah. Write it down. Make it plain. Good. Visualize winning. How do we visualize? How do you visualize winning? Some of the answers we tell, that's, that's what that sounds good. How about you in your personal life? Great God. <laughs> How do you visualize winning? I on my job, I was a um, I came from the bottom. I came from the bottom, now I'm hit. <laughs> I ain't said nothing bad, y'all. Great God. That's, that's true. I came from my job. And I was what you call a scab. You know what a scab is? Huh? That's something to grow up on a, <laughs> a scab. Rick, Rick, maybe not Rick, but, but, but Rick people. <laughs> they used to call us scabs. So I came from the bottom putting plastic down. I didn't have a title. Then I moved up the ladder, moved up, then I moved up. My final ladder was a foreman, and I was a um, faultlift operator. And I, I was a little fearful of becoming that. All right, so I had to visualize myself doing the job. I had to visual my, visualize myself taking all the blame and the punches and the punishment. You, got to, you just can't visualize the good part of success. 
You got to visualize what if something happened and all the heat come down on you. So winners visualize themselves being successful. Isn't that something similar to Hebrews 11 and 1? Now, faith is a substance, vision of things hoped for, the evidence of things that I don't even see. These are some qualifications that we're going to have to continue to live on. And once we live on it, then we're going to have to put it into action. Winners only spend time with other winners. Y'all hear me? Now, I'm, I'm being serious now. If you really want to be successful, if you really want to go beyond the break, if you want, really want to get out of the, the mindset of mediocrity, you really should hang with somebody that is already a place that you want to be. Winners hang around winners. Ain't too many times you see a billionaire hanging around a thousandaire. They might hang around a couple of millionaires, but mostly they hang around billionaires. Because in order to stay a billionaire, you got to keep working. And you got to associate yourself with other people that have the same mentality, am I right? That you have, all right? Now, you got that right. Amen. You got that right. So winners, that's right, only spend time with other winners. Amen. Now, on the spiritual side, we, we, you know, we understand that Jesus did with sinners and all that, but he was the son of God. You, you ain't the son of God. <laughs> Amen. Don't get it twisted that you can be a consistent friend to an unbeliever. You can't do it. Yeah, that's right. You can't do it. I mean, you can hang around. You have to be around them. You got to let your light so shine in darkness. But I'm talking about being, I'm talking about being in, in, in dwelling with them all the time. I'm always texting them. I'm always DMing them. We always going out to eat. Either you join them or they join you. You got to be careful. Birds of a flock together. There was a story that came up called the Ugly Duckling. Y'all remember that? All right. All the other ducklings were brown, but one duckling was yellow, I think. It was the opposite way around. All, they was all yellow, and this was brown? Okay, all right. All right, we're closing. A winner recognizes worth ethic, drive, passion, and vision. Most of all, dedication. Now, all these things I'm reading, a winner recognizes worth ethic, drive, passion. You can't teach passion. It's hard. I mean, you could kind of mimic it. You could make a $3 bill off of passion. <laughs> but when it comes to something that you really love on the inside, mama would have to tell Iverson or Steph Curry, boy, the light on, come, out, come outside in this house. You still bouncing that basketball? They would have to tell um, um, Kansas City, what's your quarterback name? Mahomes. But what you doing? Do you, you know how you get the football, you just throw it in the air when you got nobody to throw it to? Throw it in the air and you run it. Come on in here, boy. You, you, you. But what is he doing? He's practicing. What is he doing? He's visualizing himself winning. That's called passion. When you all alone by yourself, you still read your Bible. You still fast on Christmas. <laughs> You still, I mean, you're going to eat after 12. I mean, <laughs> that's coming from the minister, y'all, the one that's leading as an example. Ain't nothing going to leave, ain't nothing going nowhere after 12 o'clock. That's real sacrifice. I thought about that when, when God gave me Monday and Tuesday. I said, Lord, um, Christmas on a Monday. Sacrifice. It, you'd be all right. I mean, it's food. Uh, and, and juice, is that important to you? You have to have it? All right. All right. Huh? Take that shirt off right now. Because <laughs> I'm going, that ain't, <laughs> it's team, it ain't, it ain't team G to team somebody else. <laughs> exactly. But one thing, at least, at least he's telling his truth. Yeah, at least he's telling his truth. But let me find out he ain't fast Monday morning and Tuesday. Let me find out that he eating oatmeal cookies that he put in the oven. Because I used to like to do that on Christmas. I used to like to put cookies in the oven. Get the whole house like. 
Cause y'all don't know about fresh cookies in the oven. <laughs> Not all cookies, fresh cookies. <laughs> right, Pillsbury, the Pillsbury. <laughs> I say fresh, fresh out the um, refrigerator. <laughs> All right, I want you guys, amen, to really study the story in Exodus 14. I want you to read Exodus 14, 15, the whole chapters. That's good reading. Exodus 14, it's in your private time. Even if you don't read it, um, how many of you have the Bible on your phone? How many of you the Bible read to you? Huh? Some of y'all be driving far from work or back home. But I want you to look at, there's some things that I was going to get into, but amen. I want you to look at Moses and what happened to him when he gained success. When I say success, he was able to bring the children of Israel out of bondage of 400 years. And he was able to rejoice when he saw. You see, the Bible says that Moses lifted up his rod because the children began to complain. We ain't got nothing to eat. You brought us out here in the wilderness to die? At least when we was in Egypt, we had something to eat. We had clothes. We had raiment. So Moses said, Lord, they complaining. And when you read that, God said, well, what that got to do with me? And so many words, God said, well, what are you telling me for? And then God began to tell him what to do. And he took his rod, and the Bible says the river parted, the Red Sea. And it took them about three or four days just to get down in the Red Sea, another week or two to walk the Red Sea, and then another three or four days to go up out of the Red Sea. And then Pharaoh came. Sister Charlotte, when Pharaoh came, and when all of them got in the middle, God said, lift up your rod again. And the walls of water came down, and it destroyed. The Bible says nothing was left. No, no um, chariot, no horse, no consumed everybody. God fought his, for his people. And I need you to look and see what them crazy folks did after God gave them the victory. The Bible said Miriam took the tamarind and her and Aaron started dancing and, and then they started to get back in the same old mindset. Don't you know it's easy to forget where you come from? Oh, it's easy. And sometimes it's harder to get back to that place. Amen. Amen. So read that for me. Amen. That was one of my, the, my stories I was going to share with you, and God just didn't lead me that way. Amen. I want to talk about the victory of the Red Sea and how the children of Israel conducted themselves. There was even a, a time where Miriam and Aaron began to accuse Moses. They say, well, hmm, seemed like God just talked to you. He don't talk to us. So they begin to put their mouth. You got to be careful who you put your mouth on. I'm talking about talk about. I know you might not do it in front of them, but if you put your mouth on God's man or woman servant that, that's consecrated and anointed, the best thing to do is just say, I don't understand. But when you start, amen, amen, cutting them with your words, amen, and damning them with the things that they do that you don't understand, you got to be careful. The Bible said God struck his own sister. Moses had a sister named, Ma somebody say Miriam. That's my sister name, my only sister, Miriam. God struck Miriam with leprosy and told her, get out the camp, go in the woods. Not one day, not two. How many days in a week? God told Miriam, get out from the people in the camp seven days. Why? Because she spoke against, not her brother, the man of God. Amen. So what, the, what is the aftermath? The aftermath of winning? Stay committed. Stay devoted. Do the work. Stay committed. Stay devoted. And do the work. Put your hands together and give God praise. Hallelujah. We thank God. Amen. We thank God for everyone that's coming out. I definitely want to get a picture of everyone with the t-shirts on, with the team, amen, shirts the team colors and all that. So, but at this time, we want to take up our offering. Amen. I would like to have a competition on who has the best looking shirt, you know, with the features and, you know, Jaguars, all kind of stuff like that. <laughs> I mean, you know, animals make a difference. Yes, it do. Amen. Have y'all ever seen a bulldog and a Jaguar go at each other? Who gonna win that? 
How about a falcon? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. You want an elephant. <laughs> Amen. God bless you, saints. We love you so much. Amen. We're going to ask everyone to stand. Amen. Y- y- y'all could do sin by and bless the offering. Thank you. Give them that. Amen. We're going to ask you to come with your offering. Amen. Remember, amen, to give your best gift as unto the Lord because he's always given us his best gift. You fight on. You, you fight on. on. You fight on. Oh, you fight on. Keep your sword in your hand. You, you fight on. Oh. You fight on. You fight on. Oh, you fight on. You fight on. Oh, you fight on. Keep your Hand. You, you fight on, oh, 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 you fight on. Well, keep your sword in your hand. Ooh, you fight on. by money. Yes, yes. Birthday month for the month of December. Birthday December. Uh, Takisha's birthday is today. It's today? Yes. Wow. Ah, all right. nephew that was this month and my brother was on the 13th. All right. Yes. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Oh, yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Love it. Love it. Come on. Let's sing happy birthday to him. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you, to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. Stay right there, y'all. Happy birthday. You made another year, y'all. Happy birthday. How old are you? Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Get some cake and ice cream. Happy Free cake. Happy birthday! Sugar free ice cream too. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Let's have happy birthday to you, to you. Amen. The birthday offering, birthday offerings. Amen. Beautiful, wonderful. Can we stand for the blessing of the offering, please? Lord, we thank you for this blessing, for the work of your kingdom. We want to bless the uh, members of the church here, family that have gave. Bless their household, bless their finances, bless their relationships, Lord Jesus. We are about to approach the end of this year. Let us be safe until we meet again on Fourth Sunday. Amen. If y'all can just come on up now, we want to get a picture, amen, with everyone that was able to uh, participate, amen. We're going to do it again. Can we do this one again? Yes. 
Amen. Let's do it in February. I think that's around the Super Bowl time. Amen. Some of y'all might change teams. I might. <laughs> you, you, oh, oh, Lord. Amen. That's called bunny hopping. Bunny hopping. Hop. Amen. I'm a, I'm a diehard Jacksonville Jaguars. Everybody know about Jacksonville, don't it? Yeah, baby. Hope he was. Amen. Amen. Oh, you got a hat, too. Amen. 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 Any announcements? Amen. We're going to have our... Um, Amen. Go ahead. You go, go ahead now. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. No, right. Right. Oh, I think we need to. Can you, can you come up here? Can, no, no, y'all stay here. Can you come down here on the step? Yeah. <laughs> come over here, mama. Um, I'm trying to get the hot, tall people. Get the tall people. Well, I'm sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> she said no. <laughs> All right. Come on, everybody look at the camera. On count of three, we're going to say Jesus. One, two, three. Jesus. Jesus. One more time. One, two, three. Jesus. Jesus. Next time, say Jacksonville, win it all. One, two, three. Oh Jesus. <laughs> God bless you. you. All right. Well, I'm good, Rick. I like that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for what you do. Wonderful. Church family. Oh, that's beautiful. We just beautiful. want to thank everyone that supports us the way they do. Wow, look at God. Love us the way we love one another. Look at God. And I tell you Ooh. what, we couldn't have a better church. That's right. Amen. Wonderful. Amen. 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 Because God is here. Merry, Merry Christmas. Yeah, I love that. Merry Christmas. Yes, sir. God continue oh, to strengthen can't. each and every one of us. <laughs> it's my prayer for everyone. Thank you so much for everything you do year after year. Thank you so much. Wonderful. That's the benefits of coming to church and being on time. Thank you so much, Mount Pisgah. We love our church. Amen. Come on, you can have a seat. Amen. Continue standing. Taikisha going to give us some announcements, and then we're going to. Amen. Okay, listen up, everybody, as you're taking your seats. <laughs> All right, watch night. Amen. We will bring in a new year with our church on Sunday night starting at 10 p.m. on the 31st. Amen. Love and Faith Ministries will be having a revival every night in January. And has asked our very own Pastor Farrell to minister the word on January the 5th. And he got gladly accepted. It will start at 7 p.m. So please come out and support our pastor. On fourth Sunday, December the 24th, which is our Christmas service. After service, it's going to be first come, first served at... Ten Fin Restaurant or Western Sizzler. They have not decided yet. Um, they're going to need an official count. If anyone would like to go, we all would have to arrive at the same time in order to be seated all together. Amen? Amen. Repeat that one more time. <clears throat> Ten Fin Restaurant or Western Sizzler. What is it? What's the service? What do they have? It's our Christmas dinner. Oh, it is the Christmas dinner. I'm sorry. <laughs> the Christmas dinner... Amen. Um, it'll be either Ten Fin Restaurant or Western Sizzler. Um, it'll be right after service, so if you want to come, um, we need to leave at the same time so everyone will be able to sit together. Amen. Amen. Our annual homecoming service will be on January the 7th. Woo! Homecoming! Bring it in the new year. <laughs> It will be January the 7th, starting at 9.30. Um, the participation in the MLK parade this year is being considered. Not sure what time yet, but it will be held on January the 15th. Asking pastor, youth advisors, and members to participate. Rep your church. 
What better way to represent our church than to show off the name of your church? We have hats available and T-shirts coming soon. We are asking for a small donation of $15 for hats. And if you can't donate and you still want to represent your church, come see Pastor Farrell or myself, and we will see what we can do. Amen. Again, come and join us for Sunday for our Christmas program and Holy Communion service starting at 930. Thank you. Wonderful. Come on, everyone standing. Give Takesha a round of applause. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, I enjoy being with you today. Amen. I enjoy being with all of you guys. We love you so much, and love is everlasting. Amen. You can stand. We're going to dismiss. This coming fourth Sunday will be candlelight. Amen. Candlelight communion. We got some candles. We want to put the candles on the altar. It's our last communion service that we're going to commemorate the best man that we know. His name is Jesus Christ. Amen. He's the best man that ever walked on earth and the best man that lives in eternity. What's his name? Jesus Christ. And we want to wear Holy Communion. We're going to ask you to wear red and white if you're able to. Red and white. Not Habersham. Not the groceries. <laughs> Amen. I used to work there, y'all. Red and white. I bag groceries. Amen. So we're going to ask everyone that can, you know, adorn yourself in red and white. And maybe we'll take a, a picture of everybody looking, amen, in that red and white together. Amen. Also, we were supposed to have the children's, amen, rehearsal for the skit. Amen. But, you know, sometimes the weather climate, you know, some people, they just don't come out. And I understand. I understand for some of them that just can't come out. Amen. But I was really, really hoping, amen, that the children would have came and practice for the skit. So it looks like we may have to have one long practice. Amen. This week. I think it's Tuesday. I think Sister Mary Lewis said Tuesday they're going to have the practice. So I'm asking all of our participants, you know who you are. You were on, um, you came to the meeting last Sunday in the rear. So please, let's be here Tuesday at 630 for our practice for our Christmas skit. All hearts and minds are clear. We still have the jackets in the back, the 4T, the jackets. I think it's an extra small leather jacket. I think that's leather. Isn't that leather? I gave somebody one, and we still have the T-shirts in the back. If they're not gone by fourth Sunday, I'm going to just take them to the Goodwill. Amen? We're not just going to store stuff in the back. So we still have four T T-shirts, brand new, four T. That's free. Think about if you know anyone in your community, a small child that wears four T. Go take a look at them. Amen? It may not be for you or your children or your family, but give it to someone else. Amen? Amen. Thank you so much. That being all. Okay. Okay. Listen, Lee Lady Fair, I want to get one more picture. Amen. Who took the picture? Amen. Let's get another picture. Amen. Let's get another picture. All right. Let's. Uh, she will. All uh, right. Raise your right hand. May the Lord watch between me and thee, while we're absent, one from another. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Don't let the same person take the picture this time. 